Come on, stand on your feet. Let's take someone by the hand. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Indeed, God, we don't want rocks to cry out for us. So we humble ourselves. We surrender who we think we are so that we can see Jesus. God, we need a word from you today because some of us came in here heavy. Some came because loved ones were ill. Others came for other reasons. But we all came because we need a word. So God, we thank you for what you've already have done. We thank you, God. If we had a thousand tongues, it would still be, thank you, Lord. If we had a thousand tongues, it would be, bless you, Lord. So God, we ask right now, we offer these praises unto you. And Lord God, I'm asking that I will decrease, that you will increase so that they would see Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. That they would see Jesus. That they would see Jesus. That they would, that we would, that we would see Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless God for each and every one of you. Thank you so very much for allowing me to go on, on travel last week. Um, God showed up, and I, I am grateful for that. I'm grateful for this praise and worship team. Amen. And for Brother Will, let me say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For a new addition, Brother Chris Jordan, who is at Grant AME Church, who has volunteered to come over on third Sunday and be with the praise and worship team. I thank you for the Alphas and Omegas. Amen. Amen. I thank you for this ministerial staff, the doorkeepers, for all of you that have gathered in the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. I greet you this morning. Amen. To the visitors, it is certainly no accident that you stopped by the number one church because we are the only church in the whole wide world that sits both on humanity and divinity. So when humanity and divinity met, it created resurrection. So you came to the right place at the right time because it is time for you in your sanctified soul to be resurrected. Amen. 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 There is a word from the Lord. And if you have your Bibles, I would ask that you turn to Philippians we're changing the scripture that was read this morning. We're going to read Philippians 3.14. Philippians, Philippians, that's New Testament. If you go past Ephesians, right, and, and please stand. Please stand for the reading of the word. If you don't have a Bible, there should be one in your pew, amen. If, the, if you don't know where Philippians is, go to the table of content. It'll tell you, amen, amen, amen. If you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, if you don't have a Bible, is there not a Bible event on your pew? Share Bibles. It is not in the scripture. Amen. If you don't have it, we'll put Bibles in the pew. But for now, let me just read what it says. Philippians 3, and I'll be reading Philippians 3, 12 through 17. Amen. And this is what it says, Philippians 3. It says, not that I have already attained or am already perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has already laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, say there's one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to forget those things which are behind, and I'm reaching forward to those things which are ahead. 14 is where I want to concentrate on. He says, I press toward the mark. 
or I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will even this to you, reveal this even to you. I want to concentrate briefly on 14. I press towards the mark. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. You may take your seats. Also, let me say briefly that um, the lay organization is having a bus trip. It was, it was not mentioned in the announcements, but I want you to please, please, please. It is July the 20th. It is to help them raise their budget. Amen. You could see Lady Daisy, Mother Daisy, Brother Will uh, for more information. Amen. But definitely, please, it is in your bulletin. It is a well worth trip, worth taking. Amen. Just briefly this morning, I want to deal with the topic. There are champions among you. There are champions among us. Look at yourself, point to yourself, and say, I'm one of them. There are champions. Come on, say it like you mean it. There are champions among us. Now, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Amen. They are champions. They are champions. They are winners among us. In an article written by motivational speaker Craig Harper entitled, Winners Are Made and Not Born, he makes the point that we all want to be winners. He says that no one that he has ever known wakes up wanting to be a loser. Winners don't just sit around sulking or moping. Neither do they fear failure or think words as, I can't do it. It's impossible. I don't know how to do it. Champions try to make it happen, and they keep on trying until it does happen. Even when the odds seem huge and insurmountable, Nothing will phase a champion or a winner permanently. Long before Usain Bolt, a Jamaican sprinter, was regarded as the fastest man ever, he was a winner and a champion. He said that when he was young, the only thing that he could think about was sports. So as a, we know that the scripture says that so as a man think it, that he or she shall become. Uh, Usain Bolt said that in his, when he was a child that his brothers would take him out and he would run and he worked with his parents, but all he could think about was becoming a champion. So much so that he became the top marketable athlete and the greatest and highest paid sprint runner ever in history. Anybody, church, can quit. It's exactly what your adversary or your competitors hope you will do. And there's really always an excuse to do so. But champions, Jerry Rice says, champions will do today what others won't so that tomorrow they can accomplish what others can't. The, the Apostle Paul must have had some interest in athletes, in athletics, because he frequently used the game as, il as an illustration for his message. Hmm. He would use words like, I wrestle not, representing a wrestler. I wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness. He went on in 2 Titus 2 and 5 to say that I, 
I'm sorry, 2, 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Thus, Paul warns for his readers spiritual lessons from the world of athletics and perhaps even from the Olympic Games themselves. In Philippians 3.14, we read, not as though I had already obtained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Hear this. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I, pray, I forget those things which are behind, and I am reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of a high calling. The church of Philippi was founded by the Apostle Paul. It was written, it is believed by most theologians that it was established in the second missionary journey, recorded in Acts 16, 1 and 40. Paul originally went to Macedonia because of a night vision described for us in Acts 16 and 9. It is when Paul saw a man standing in Macedonia asking that he would come over to help, help them. And, and so Paul responded and the gospel went triumphantly westward, beginning in Philippi as the first city to be evangelized in Europe. Most theologians agree that one would be hard-pressed to find one single passage from the book which might serve as a key verse. However, most agree that Philippians 3.14 would do to serve well. In this morning's text, when we're looking that there is a champion among us, Paul paints for us a very vivid road map on how to obtain championship. He says if you're going to be a part of the A-team, there are three attributes that you will find in all champions. The first is that there must be a desire. Great athletes have the desire to be the best they can be. They have the desire to dominate their sports and to understand that they were put on this earth for that reason. Whether they are weightlifters, football players, baseball players, or any other type of athlete, they realize that they have a burning passion for their craft. Champions, he says, always strive to do better. In other words, if you were to, if you were to look at Paul's resume, he says this. He says, notice now, he says, brethren, I count myself not have apprehended. In other words, what he's saying is, I haven't done all that I need to do if I'm going to be a champion. Amen? But looking at his resume, we would think differently. Paul, whose resume is lined up with the aristocrats of that day, he was he, what we would say today, came from good stock. Amen. He was a Hebrew. He was a, a Jew, he was a, came from the tribe of Benjamin. And the tribe of Benjamin, they were the aristocratic leaders. He was, he knew the law. He knew the discipline. He understood the church. But here he's saying, if you're looking from the outside, I look as though I had it all put together. He said, but it wasn't until I had a confrontation on the Damascus road that with Jesus the Christ that I realized that which I thought I had, I had not received. Ah, oh, let me tell you that if you're going to be a champion, you have always got to shoot for something higher than where you are. A champion is never satisfied with reaching status quo. A champion said that 
there's always a, a higher mark for me to reach. A champion doesn't get swayed by their academia, isn't swayed by their community, isn't swayed by who sit next to them. It's not enough that we come to church and we praise and we worship. It's not enough that we can go and feed the hungry. If you don't think there's more, then why are you coming to church? Uh, he says, he says, he says, listen, church. He says, everything that Walker Temple has done has been for the good. You've done some great ministries. You've fed the hungry. You've clothed the naked. But Jesus said it this way. Jesus said, Walker Temple, don't get so comfortable in that which you have already done because there are greater works for you to do. The work that you saw me do is a greater work. You're going to do that and more. He said, understand this. Yes, you've been trained in how to be a missionary. But if you've not been trained on how to lay hands on the sick, you have not arrived at the point that I want the church to move. Don't get comfortable. Don't think that you have it already made and it's already put together. A real champion has a burning desire within their soul to want to do better. Ah, ah, let me, let me, Gabby Douglas, one of the, the, the gold champion who won both to the round and all around at this last uh, Olympic. She said they were trying to make fun of a tamer because she, she, her hair was nappy and because she didn't look like them. And she said, they asked her, the commentator said to her, so now what did you think? when they made fun of your hair. Gabby said, well, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. Thinking that was going to get her, she came back with the quitnicks, and then he thought, he said, uh, well, now tell me this. Uh, you know you fell off the balance beam. How did you feel when you fell off the balance beam? Uh, people who are champions uh, don't look at failure. She said, I got back up, uh, and I kept looking uh, for a higher mark, uh, a real champion will always shoot for a higher mark. Ah, here we go, here we go. He says, he says, Paul says, now if you're going to be a champion, it's not enough for you, Keisha, to have a desire to be better. We, we tend to think that it's okay, that's all we need. I have a desire to write a book, but I never put pen to paper. I have a desire to go get a job, but I never get up and go fill out the application. I have a desire to be a praise team leader, but I never show up for rehearsal. I have a desire. He says, you got to take it a little bit further than a desire. If you're going to be a champion and champion you have been born to be, then you got to be dedicated to the cause. He says, notice now, he says, he says, I cannot act like I got it all together. He said, but here's what I'm going to do. He said, I got to lay hold on that thing that Jesus has laid hold on me. In other words, he's speaking about my level of commitment. If you are going to be a champion in the 21st century, you got to be committed to hard work. He says you got to rise up early and go to bed late. Psalms 1 and 2 says that I delight in the Lord. I want to do everything that the Lord told me to do. Uh, when it's raining outside uh, I need to get up uh, and tell God thank you uh, for the rain uh, when I have food on my table uh, I need to say God thank you uh, for the food on my table uh, God thank you uh, for bringing us to church this morning uh, God thank you uh, for making a way out of no way uh, he said you got to be so committed that even when it doesn't 
feel right. It's easy, Lady Terry, for us to go on a sunny day and sit and holler when the Dodgers are winning, when the Clippers are winning, but it's hard to get up and make yourself go when they, the losing team hadn't scored one point and it's raining outside. He said, but commitment will drive you to that place where you understand that it does not matter what it looks like outside. Dedication, Dr. Tamer says this. It says, I, Paul, who is writing from a jail cell, had a reason to stop, had a reason to throw in a towel. Paul writes to the brethren and he says these words. He says, I want you to know that it's a bleak situation if I'm looking from the natural. But because of the things I used to do and the places I used to go, it is not as bleak as it could have been. And since it isn't as bleak as it could have been, I want y'all to have joy. Because when you're dedicated to a situation, when you're dedicated to kingdom building, you can be in a prison cell and still talk about Jesus. Champions uh, who are dedicated uh, look for red seas to be parted. Uh, they look to put, make wine, water out of wine. Uh, they look, God, uh, when, when you're a champion, uh, you're looking for a reason uh, to preach the gospel. Uh, you're not bound by uh, what they think. Uh, and your current situation does not determine the outcome. The current unique situation does not dictate to me my attitude. Uh, let me say that again. The current situation that we may find ourselves in, whether even though it is a hectic situation, it does not determine my attitude. Because I know that if God be for me, uh, who can be against me? Uh, I know that weeping may endure for a night, uh, but joy is going to come in the morning. Uh, I know uh, that when I take hold of the gospel, uh, the gospel is going to take hold of me. Uh, and in the morning, uh, when the rain falls, uh, I can say, Lord, I bless you. Uh, Lord, I praise you. Uh, when I don't have money, uh, you're my provider. Uh, when I'm sick in my body, uh, you're my healer. Uh, when I'm troubled in the courtroom, uh, you're my lawyer. Uh, because my attitude uh, is not predicated uh, upon my situation. Uh, I can sit and say, uh, for God I live. Uh, for God I die. Uh, bless uh, be the name uh, of the Lord. Say it. Say it. My situation, it looks terrible, Debbie. They talked about us, said we couldn't get up. We weren't going to make it. But somehow, when you know that you know that you know you begin to leap over mountains. You begin to part red seas. You begin to say, I will bless the Lord at all times. Paul says, he says, now, you are champions. But Dr. Tamer, some of us, yes, we're champions. But there are some people in here and some people in our communities that have not realized that they really are champions. You know, you know if you go back to Genesis where Jesus, God said, let us make man in our own image. It was never designed for you to fail. But the problem is, we're still in the warm-up position. We're still trying. When he said, I've already given it to you, we can't come out of the warm-up position. So we never realize 
the fullness of our potential. Well, what do you mean, Reverend? Warmer position. You know, I've never played sports, and I don't quite understand it. Uh, so tell me what you're talking about. Uh, well, I'm glad you asked. Because when you warm up, warm up, warm up means that you're not quite ready. You're using every technique you can. Uh, but for some reason, uh, you know the bad relationship uh, that didn't work last year. Uh, and you're still stuck on it. Uh, this year, that's warm up position. Uh, because you failed to see uh, that that relationship uh, was not good for you anyway. Uh, so you walk around uh, with your head hanging down. Uh, you walk around bad, mad uh, and bitter uh, and angry at the world. Uh, you know, warm-up position. Uh, the one that says uh, that you allow people uh, to dictate to you uh, who you are. You know, y'all, 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 am I talking to myself? Hey, Will, you know the warm-up position that says if nobody comes to church, I'm going to have a bad attitude. Uh, but when you're a champion, uh, you understand uh, that it's not about me uh, and the people, uh, but me uh, and thee. Uh, and I can come to church, uh, get my praise on, uh, shout his name, uh, watch him do uh, what he said he was going to do. Uh, you got to be so dedicated uh, that guess what? Uh, the things I used to do, uh, I don't do anymore. The places I used to go, I don't go anymore. The folk I used to hang out with, I don't hang out no more. Why? Because I'm pressing towards something that's far greater than what you can see right now. My child deserves to be a champion. My grandchild deserves to be a champion for all the fathers in the house uh, whether you have children or not uh, you owe it to every black child uh, to be a role model uh, it's time uh, for us uh, to come out the box uh, it's time uh, to get out the gate uh, and take off sometimes we can't take off because we have not been properly trained. And if you take off before it's time, Lady Gail, you'll crash, <laughs> you'll abort the ministry. <laughs> but he's totally saying uh, that here's the thing that's going to help you take off. Uh, he says, the thing I got to do uh, as a runner, I got to forget uh, some things that were behind me, uh, some hurt feelings, uh, some low down acts. Uh, not only do I need to forget the bad things. See, we think we're only supposed to forget the bad things. And so we only go as far as our memory can take us. But Paul, who was an upright man in the law, who used to kill, destroy Christians, he did what he did because he thought he was right. Uh, how many of us have a, a ministry or a ideology or a theology that says women can't preach? Uh, who, how many of us uh, know somebody who can say that black folk uh, are not equal to white folk? Uh, how many of us uh, know uh, a system that's imprisoned uh, our boys and our girls? Uh, am I just talking to myself? Uh, you got to understand uh, that I may have done some things. Uh, there are some things that held me in captivity uh, that I did myself. Uh, but there are some other things uh, that other folk did. Uh, but at some point or another, uh, you got to shake it off. Uh, you can't be a winner. Uh, you can't be a champion. Uh, and always looking back. Because uh, if you're looking back, uh, you'll never go forward. Uh, you you can never see the mark because uh, you lost your vision. Uh, you lost your focus. Uh, a champion uh, will stay focused uh, at all times. Uh, young men, uh, yes, you alpha uh, and omega. Uh, 
and somebody will tell you uh, that your future doesn't look bright. Uh, but God said, uh, this is my son uh, in whom I'm well pleased. Uh, say, yeah, you got to stay focused uh, on the mark. Uh, if he said uh, that you're somebody, uh, no, you're somebody. Uh, if he said, Mother Daisy, uh, that you're healed, uh, I don't care what the report is. Uh, I'm healed. Uh, if he says uh, that I can leap over mountains uh, and I can have hind feet uh, like a deer, uh, then I got it. Uh, and you don't need to validate it uh, because it's in my soul. Uh, say, yeah. Uh, Last point, he says, you need a desire, but desire plus dedication is not enough. That's not enough. He says, listen what he says. He said, I press toward the mark. That word press, the Greek word for that is dioko. In within that word, it says that you will, he will flee. He will be persecuted, huh? It says that he will pursue. Ah, uh, so, 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 if I'm going to press, uh, that means I got to run after. Uh, Jesus the Christ, uh, if I'm going to press, uh, when the times get hard, uh, when the people start talking about you, uh, when they stop writing your letters, uh, when they hang up the phone in your face, uh, when they persecute you, uh, when they lie on you, uh, it's easy for us uh, to run toward the mark uh, when everybody's your friend uh, and everybody's slapping your high five. Uh, but if you're going to be a champion, uh, there's going to come a day uh, Wellington, that you're going to run by yourself. Uh, there's going to come a day uh, that teachers won't try to teach you. Uh, there's going to come a day uh, when preachers won't see your potential uh, and bishops won't call your name. Uh, but I want you to know uh, if you're going to win the race, uh, you got to press. Uh, you got to run. Uh, you got to run. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I know a man uh, who was pressing his way uh, and he kept his eyes uh, on the prize. That was a conversation with a little angel by the name of Ife Davis. Ife said to her mother and her father, she said, Mother, we call her the great philosopher. She says, Mother, she says, Now, yesterday we said, Tomorrow. Tomorrow is today. Y'all missed that one. Let me talk to somebody who knows. He said, Mario, she said this. She said, On yesterday we said, Tomorrow. You follow me so far? Uh huh. And when the 24 hours was over and she had gotten in her bed, curled up on her pillow, after she said, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, Lord, well in between that if and should, 24 hours passed and she remembered telling her mama and her daddy that yesterday I said it was tomorrow and 24 hours later 24 hours later yesterday became today let me go on this Keisha help me I need you to talk back to me okay you're a school teacher uh huh Talk back to me, uh huh. If you are a school teacher and you're an educator and you're giving people, you're giving an exam, right? And you say to them, I'm gonna give you an opportunity on tomorrow to make up for what you did not do today. Then they are expecting on tomorrow for you to keep the word from today. <laughs> 
That's what Jesus is saying. I told you on yesterday that I am the same today and tomorrow. I'll never change. I told you you are a winner. You play on the A team. Get it in your mind that nothing can stop the plans of God. Because yesterday is tomorrow and tomorrow is today. So church, when are you going to get it together and decide for yourself that you are a champion? When are you going to say enough is enough? When? Pauline, when? When, baby? Dion. I asked Dion yesterday. I said, they don't know, Tracy. I told Terry, I said, Terry, I like teaching moments. I told, so I asked every one of them, each one of them, rather, why are you dancing? And out of all the answers, I like Dion's answer. Because all of the children gave wonderful answers. But when I got to him, I said, why are you dancing? He said, emphatically looking, it's because this is what I want to do. I said, okay, but why are you dancing? He repeated it again. This is what I want to do. And I could see him getting a little anxious about it. I said to him, I said, Dion, okay, you want to dance, but not only is it because this is what you want to do, but are you dancing because the kingdom of God is upon you? And he said, that too. What was significant about his statement is that it didn't matter how I rephrased the statement or rephrased the question. It was already in his mind. And he was not easily deterred from that which God has said in his mind. So I'm telling you today, there is a reason that we are champions. And where reasons we're champions is because, not because of who you are, not because your academia, not because of who your mama is and who your daddy is, not because you go to walk a temple but somewhere some 2,000 years ago way back before there was a thought of Renita before there was a thought of Rosalind way back when Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit was all one God the Father looked over humanity and said I need somebody that can step down uh, from divinity uh, and into uh, humanity uh, and save uh, a wretch like me. Uh, that's why uh, I'm a champion. Uh, that's why uh, I got to run the race. Uh, that's why uh, I can't throw in the towel. Stand on your feet. There's a champion in you, chosen to lead, chosen to be on the A team, chosen to win from the beginning to the end and all that in between. Come with me from day to day. Yes, you're going to have some trials. You're going to have some storms and you're going to have some troubles and people aren't going to like you and they're going to talk about you. They're going to talk about what you look like and what you sound like. But God declared before the heavens were formed that you were a champion. And it doesn't matter who or what 